Hey y'all, this is Dr. Carmen Corder with thedoctornurse.com and today I wanted to do a short video about HIV. Um, one of my Facebook followers in our wonderful community of Facebook, our Facebook group, said that they are going to be starting immunity this week in Med Surge. So I wanted to do a quick video about probably one of the most important topics under the heading of immunity, which is HIV. So let's just dive right in. You know that I like to kind of get to the point and make it as short and as simple without leaving out any important information. So we're gonna talk about, with HIV, we're gonna talk about the patho of it. We're gonna talk about the signs and symptoms. And then finally, we're going to talk about the nursing care. So at the top, HIV, we have human immunodeficiency virus. So you pretty much know how HIV is passed from one person to another, right? I don't really need to go over that. You know, needle to needle, blood to blood, um, sexual contact from mother to child. So once the virus has um, entered a, a host or entered the patient, um, the patient is now infected with what we call HIV retroviruses, okay? And then there's two forms. There's HIV-1 and HIV-2. So these patients are now going to be infected with HIV-1 and HIV-2 retroviruses. So what these retroviruses do is they actually enter and kind of alter the patient's cellular DNA. All right, so retroviruses kind of like get in there and reprogram the host cell, okay? So they wreak all kinds of havoc. And the cells that they target are called CD4 T helper cells, okay? These are T cells and they are the CD4 cells. And that, the number of CD4 cells is what we as healthcare providers, we are looking at the numbers and following those numbers of CD4 cells um, as actually to give us a gauge of how much this virus has progressed. So those are the cells that these retroviruses kind of enter and alter the DNA. And then those cells eventually are destroyed. Okay, they undergo um, apoptosis and those cells are destroyed. So as HIV progresses, you're going to see the patient's CD4 cellular count start to decline and that is a bad thing. All right, so that is just kind of a brief overview of the etiology and the, and the patho of what these retroviruses do, the types of cells that they attack. Next, we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms. With HIV, there are three kind of distinct stages. In the first stage, we call this acute seroconversion. In this stage, the patient, once they're um, infected with the retroviruses, this stage of acute seroconversion can actually take up to weeks or last for weeks or months. Um, at this time, the viral load is really, really high. So these retroviruses are replicating like crazy during this acute seroconversion period. All right, so that can be weeks or months while that's going on. The next stage, which can last for years, is what we call asymptomatic HIV. So you're going to see a, a lower viral load, um, but the patient may just be able to, you know, go on about life and not have any symptoms, not have any of these opportunistic infections that we see with HIV, because remember, HIV and AIDS does not kill not one single patient. Opportunistic infections kill our HIV patients, all right? So the asymptomatic period can go on for months or even years where the patient does not experience any symptoms at all. Um, while those CD4 counts are kind of going down and down and down until 
they reach the third and final stage of this virus, which is officially now AIDS. All right, so AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. We can diagnose AIDS when the patient's CD4 count is less than 200. All right, so that is the last and final stage of the progression of HIV. When that CD4 count is less than 200, the patient is now open to all kinds of opportunistic infections, which is what is ultimately going to um, kill our patient. So what kind of opportunistic infections are we talking about? Well, since our CD4 cells are T cells, then we're looking at mainly viruses and fungus um, opportunistic infections, as opposed to if our B cells, and I like to remember this little mnemonic, our B cells, you know, those are the ones that produce antibodies when a bacteria is uh, introduced to them. And so our B cells kind of deal more with bacteria. So B cells, bacteria. When our T cells are the ones that are affected, we're going to have more problems with fungus and viruses. What are we looking out for? So things like candidiasis or yeast. We're looking for things like cytomegalovirus, uh, cervical cancer. When patients reach this stage in the progression of HIV, cervical cancer now becomes an increased risk for these folks. Histoplasmosis, um, something called Kaposi's sarcoma. That's a big one, mark that down. Now this is, this will manifest as um, almost like purpura or you know, big kind of purple blotches on the patient's skin. So Kaposi's sarcoma is another huge thing that AIDS patients have to deal with. Uh, tuberculosis, all right, they're much, much, much more susceptible to developing the active um, form of tuberculosis. You know, a healthy individual can actually be exposed to TB, but until their immune system becomes compromised for whatever reason, then that TB will just remain latent. But unfortunately for our patients with CD4 counts of less than 200, that TB is going to become active and it's going to cause pulmonary symptoms and all kinds of problems for our AIDS patients. Lastly, and definitely not least, AIDS patients develop something called pneumocystitis carina pneumonia, or PCP. This is the number one killer of our AIDS patients. So it's PCP. It's a certain type of pneumonia that we call opportunistic because it preys on patients that do not have well-developed immune systems. And so this is the number one killer of our AIDS patients. So when you have an AIDS patient uh, or an AIDS patient that you're taking care of, what are your goals as the nurse? Well, your number one goal because opportunistic infections are what is going to kill these patients. Our number one goal is to prevent these opportunistic infections from happening. I want to tell you a quick story about my father-in-law. He does not have AIDS, he does not have HIV, but what he does have, he had a liver transplant back a few months ago. And after you have a transplant, you have to take all kinds of medications that suppress your immune system, right? So your body will not attack the new organ and recognize it as foreign, okay? So he takes all these immunosuppressive drugs to suppress his immune response. So essentially, he is kind of in the same boat as patients with, with AIDS, with HIV, as far as being susceptible to opportunistic infections. And in fact, we've just experienced one of those opportunistic infections with him. He developed a meningitis caused by a fungus. Okay, see there again, when those T cells are the ones that are affected, it's fungus and viruses that cause problems. 
So he developed actually a cryptococcal, um, which is a nasty little fungus. You can actually breathe it in um, on bird droppings, but he actually developed a meningitis from that. So we've been dealing with that. He's now on some very um, powerful antifungal medications, but I'm just trying to kind of tie this picture in together for you of when people are immunosuppressed, your number one goal has got to be protecting these people from these opportunistic infections, which can absolutely and will um, kill the patient. All right, so what, what do we use? What do we give patients with, with HIV? So um, they're gonna be on all these antiretroviral medications, right? So patient teaching about those medications is extremely important. They're gonna be on a combination of antiretroviral medications. We're gonna hit them with two or three or four different types um, to make sure that that virus, uh, we slow it down from replicating. And you've got to educate your patient on taking that medication every single day the way that it is intended. Now these medications are notorious for causing GI upset and GI symptoms. Tell your patient to take those with food. Um, to help those GI symptoms. Let them know what to expect with these medications because the more that they know and the more that they're educated about what's going to happen when they take these medications, the more likely they are to comply with their medication regimen, which is the number one thing that we need them to do to keep that CD4 count up as high as it can be. Because if we stop the virus from replicating, then our CD4 counts are going to improve, and that is their defense against infections. Certain other things like teaching your patient to avoid deli meats, foods that can cause foodborne illnesses, all right? You know, something that might just cause you and I a little nausea and vomiting and maybe diarrhea for a couple days can actually kill your, your AIDS patient. So educating them about foods that they need to avoid. All right, so education, education, education. Um, hand washing when you're taking care of your AIDS patient. Um, reverse isolation, okay, if they have really, really low absolute neutrophil counts. All of those infection control measures are going to be your number one priority. One last thing I want to mention before I'll let you guys go is the diagnosis of AIDS and I know somebody out there is going to have a question about this on your nursing exam when you're tested over AIDS. The diagnosis of HIV is done through something called the ELISA test and it is confirmed through something called uh, a western blot. Okay, so remember those two terms. ELISA is spelled E-L-I-S-A, and then it is confirmed by a Western blot. But I, what I really want you to remember and take away from that is that there can be false negatives from those diagnostic tests early on in the disease, okay? So during that acute seroconversion time, which can last, remember, from weeks to months, we may have an actual false negative uh, diagnosis for HIV, all right? So remember that about the diagnosis of HIV. Those are really important points. And that pretty much sums up what I wanted to talk to you guys today about HIV. I hope you have learned something from this. I hope this makes sense. I hope now you'll go into lecture a lot more confident and you'll understand more what your instructor is talking about, about these CD4 counts and opportunistic infections and everything. And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you guys and hear from you guys on the website really, really soon.